All right. Uh, now, the, the, the Saudis saying they're going to take action uh, in the future and try to round up anyone who might have been culpable in this action against the Washington Post report is one thing. But the financial impact, how we respond to all of that, is going to be quite another. Remember, we have tens of billions of dollars at stake globally. This is actually, for the time being, more important than whatever back and forth we've been having with China. Tracy Carrasco is looking into all of that right now. Tracy. Good morning, Neil. Yes, defense stocks could be in focus as questions mount for both the United States and Saudi Arabia over the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi Council consulate in Istanbul earlier this month. Saudi Arabia warned it will respond to any, quote, threats or sanctions against it as its stock market plunged on Monday, saw continued volatility this week. This following President Trump's warning of severe punishment over Khashoggi's disappearance. However, just yesterday, the president reaffirmed that he does not want to cost U.S. jobs by ending U.S. sales of military equipment to the Saudis. They agreed to do this. They agreed to spend $450 billion on buying and investing in the United States. So I hope we can keep that. I hope we don't lose track of that. There are plenty of other things we can do. The escalating tensions also has some investors concerned that economic sanctions could affect investments linked to Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, which is one of the largest in the world, with more than $220 billion in stakes around the globe. Meanwhile, oil ended down more than 3 percent for the week to 69.12 a barrel, despite the U.S.-Saudi stress. That may be, of course, because of some reports of an increase in oil supplies. And we've seen business and political leaders dropping out of the upcoming high profile Profile future investment initiative in Saudi Arabia, which highlights the country as a place to do business. A number of CEOs, including J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, Ford Chairman Bill Ford, will not be attending. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin also canceled his attendance, though he will be attending an anti-terror finance meeting with Saudi security officials later this month. Neil, a number of media outlets, including Fox Business, CNBC, The New York Times, Bloomberg, CNN, and The Financial Times, have also withdrawn from the event. All right, Tracy, thank you very, very much. We do have an update also from uh, King Salman, who is, uh, sometimes you can't make this up, but anyway, the king has said he has uh, ordered his son, the prince, to revamp the intelligence services, which is akin to me, you know, policing the refrigerator to make sure no one gets into it. But that that's where we stand. All right, let's get the read on the market fallout from all of this. Uh, Gary Kalpon joins us, Jonas Max Ferris, and the Stock Swish founder, uh, Melissa Armo. Uh, Melissa, contained reaction, maybe thinking that there'll be a contained response. What do you think? Honestly, I think this is just noise for the market. Market has much more bigger concerns with the Chinese tariffs and how if that goes into 2019. I think we saw some selling this week, but if you look at the selling from last week in the market, this week was really a big nothing burger. We just were flat this week. And really from August until October, the market ran up, made new highs, came back down. So we're really trading in that same range in the Dow and the S&P we were just two months ago, which isn't that big of a deal. It's not like we've had this huge, massive sell-off. We're really back at the same price point we were just a few weeks ago. So I don't think that this is going to affect the market long term unless it gets blown out of proportion. And that's why Trump is being very diplomatic here. He didn't rush to conclusions and say the guy's definitely dead and blame the prince. We're waiting to see what's happening if there's recordings because that would definitely say what happened and that might be Well, the Turks insist there are and apparently the first time I read this morning was that the CIA has heard or, and or looked at, at some of them. So we don't know for sure on that. But I do want to posit with you, Gary, that if it gets severe, um, the president has rightly argued, you know, we have a lot of big financial commitments with the Saudis, $450 billion. Uh, over the course of the last couple of years, 110 billion of that just last year with the defense agreement. So a lot's on the line. Well, you've heard the president, businessman in chief, basically saying we're going to do business as usual and something you haven't heard from anybody else around the world that we're pulling back from investing with them. Uh, they're not going to. This is about the bucks. So I think it's going to be business as usual and as we get farther and farther away from what just happened, I think it's going to be back to all the other things that are affecting the market. And I, I must tell you, I just want to add in, the market's on the ledge here. 
the Dow is only five or six percent off the highs, yeah. but uh, there's a whole slew of industries at new yearly lows, world markets, the whole works. And if we break the lows uh, that we've seen over the last two weeks, I think we've got another big leg down, and I'm, I'm real worried here. I hope uh, we do not break, but we're on the verge. And, Could uh, this be the catalyst for that? Uh, uh, potentially, yeah. if a tape comes out, you just remember, in good markets, they'll, good markets will ignore bad news. In bad markets, bad news is look out. So uh, I'm watching. This is going to be a big week to two weeks heading into the election. Yeah, but it's earnings season. Google and Amazon report Thursday night. If they if, if they perform well, I mean, the market is going to move Netflix up. Netflix gaps up 30 bucks on earnings, a growth name, mm -hmm. drops $45 in two days. That's what the market's doing right now. Well, if that me, continues. Let me it's step not back from this, and Jonas, maybe you can help me with this, because there, there are a quick few ways to look at the Saudi full of oil to, to Melissa's point of nothing burger there. It ended up not doing much. Defense stocks originally hit and then they came back. Um, so the, the, the areas that you think would be quickly hit, including the Saudi currency and the Saudi markets, which were everything kind of came back. Right, because that's like the 1970s impact of the Saudi Arabia situation. There's the oil pipeline is not the problem. That oil is going to go into some market now, China or whatever. It's not like the old days where we were getting a lot of oil from them. They would just cut us off and the oil price would skyrocket. The pipeline out of Saudi Arabia is cash to the venture, to, to the tech companies at this point. You know, let's not forget Saudi Arabia now is on the way to having the biggest world uh, sovereign wealth fund. They have a, a, almost 5% stake in Tesla. They just give a billion dollars to another, t another American uh, electric car startup uh, lucid they are a, they're turning their oil revenue slowly into an investment fund of epic proportions that keeps silicon Valley. It's one of the major sources and we want to be part of that of course we do which is why in some ways president's not being diplomatic which is possibly good At the end of the day investors know saudi arabia isn't really the enemy Saudi Arabia is one of the safest places to be a journalist in the world, believe it or not. They, if you go to the uh, APG, um, so Committee to Protect Journalists, which is a very excellent site with a database, it's almost 1,000 uh, journalists killed since 93. It's only one in Saudi Arabia, and that was by al-Qaeda in 2004. Leaving journalists out, because I think that gets disproportionate. I think nothing against my profession, but the one thing I will say, uh, this new renaissance, open, forward-thinking government, Gary, um, has arrested and detained, uh, uh, you know, a lot of dissidents. It has, and this is the crown prince who cracked down on his own family and imprisoned them, albeit in a nice In a Ritz hotel. Carlton. <laughs> right, but, but, but extracted $100 billion from them. My, my, my point here is that they're not saints, and, and to all of your point earlier that, you know, we don't expect that in this region of the world, but it is a reminder how this one journalist's death, tragic though it is, has disproportionately skewed the picture. Look, it's a lot of saying of one thing, but doing another, and drop the news on the 15th page of the newspaper so nobody's really talking about. Look, there's still plenty of bad people, still plenty of bad places around the globe. But it doesn't uh, alter your strategy. No, okay. uh, the hope is is that, yes, uh, this prince is gonna bring the culture up to snuff, but then this happens, and right. you're, all right, I think I'm going to see you guys a little bit later, but I do want to show you something else we're following very, very closely, this caravan that all of a sudden has ballooned to become a major international crisis. At first it was a few hundred, now we're told a few thousand, now we're told stuck on a bridge, not happy being stuck on a bridge, and now there's trouble at the border, not our border yet, the Mexican border with Guatemala, and it is getting nasty, very, very nasty. And the president has said either you contain it, Mexico, or else. What does or else mean after this?